Let's get ready to rumble! Welcome to Boxing Unwrapped. It's Boxing Unwrapped, the boxing podcast uh, that's known more in France than Callum Smith's next opponent. I'm Ryan. <laughs> I'm Andrew. And uh, welcome to What the F is the Boxing News, where we give you all the rundown on last week's fights, the upcoming fights, and everything you need to know in between. Uh, so, Andy, do you want to tell the people we, what we've got in store for them? Mm, yeah, I will do it. We've got, uh, obviously, a rundown of all the fights that have just happened, including, we can talk a little bit, mention briefly the ones from two weeks ago, because we haven't done one of these since. Um, we can talk about... Uh, the upcoming fights. There's a couple of things to mention, including my tip for the top in the heavyweight division, Ryan. Uh, another one. I, I mean, they keep doing them until I get one right. <laughs> we'll talk about what went wrong last week, or perhaps more pertinently, what went right. I know. Uh huh. I know. I know. Just call me Mystic Meg. <laughs> we'll have we'll have a bumper random news, I believe. Mm-hmm. And we are gonna we're gonna go in for some grinding of the gears, and we'll round off with a little bit of listener corner. Good stuff. Well, let's dive right in to what the f are the results from last week. So we should start at the hydro in Glasgow. Scottish world champion Josh Taylor with his decisive points victory over even Baranchek. Well, and you know what? I heard actually uh, that there were screams uh, deep in Holyrood off the Royal Mile after Taylor beat Baranchek. And it was actually uh, Nicola Sturgeon drunk in her pants with a bottle of Bucky in her hand saying, (laughs) there must be a rule where I can declare independence now. (laughs) (laughs) It's a startling uh, startling bit of imagery for for our listeners. Imagine she's just in granny pants like with a bottle of Bucky going, ah, come on, Josh. (laughs) The buck fast kind of gradually dribbling down her chest. <laughs> yeah, it's like stained her white granny pants. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> this is the episode that finally gets us in trouble. Um, what do you think of the fight? Oh, do you know what, man? My heart was in my throat for a lot of it, uh, if I'm honest. I think that... I agree. Uh, Branchik was really testing Josh Taylor. Um, I think that, you know, to be honest with you, the last time I saw Josh Taylor tested like that was when he fought against Postal. Definitely. You know, um, and and came through it. Um, I think he probably learned a lot, but, I mean, you know, good on Baranchik. He is a solid fighter. Uh, Yeah, he was better than I thought he was going to be, actually. Yeah, you know, I think that he certainly trained for Josh Taylor, you know, um, I, I was quite surprised how Josh Taylor didn't seem to use his like size as much. He was very like willing to like go like like kind of chin to chin with him. It seems to almost suit him better, which was really odd. I couldn't understand it. Yeah, I, I thought that. I I thought um, Taylor didn't really seem to 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 do per, like as well as I thought he would have done it at range. I also thought like. Some of his his movement didn't seem quite. I mean, it's easy to look good in his previous fight against a pretty non-existent opponent, mm-hmm. but but T- Taylor didn't seem to have the sort of f- free-flowing lateral movement the same as he did in his previous fight, mm-hmm. uh, and he took quite a lot of punishment early doors. I thought mm-hmm. I had through the first five rounds. I think I had branch a cup. Mm-hmm. I thought I I know obviously the sixth round was the. the the round that, that changed everything, that changed the complexion. The fight. But if but it wasn't for was those like, two just... knockdowns, Taylor would have been mm-hmm. in trouble, I think. Well, in yes, all exactly honesty. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Because it took just that bit... Uh, Branchett recovered well, mm-hmm. didn't he? Yeah. You know, he, he really did recover well from... Because normally, you know, if you get knocked down twice in a round, you're, you know, it's all right to get knocked down once, but to get knocked down twice in a round, normally that's you fucked. But no, he recovered really, uh, really well, but not quite enough. But... I mean, it was 
it was super close, and I mm-hmm. had to, I had Brancic ahead before the knockdown. Mm-hmm. So Taylor afterwards said it was easy peasy. I don't know what fight he was watching, but it wasn't the one he was in. I know, <laughs> I know, especially like I think I don't know if he was trying to be like Billy Big Balls in front of Regis Progre. I think he was a bit because yeah. like Progre was like right next to him when he was saying it, and he can hardly say like, "Oh yeah, no, Brancic was a tough fight." I think he was probably thinking you, it. You could, yeah. I mean, well, clearly it was a tough fight. You know, I mean, if you looked at how how the fight went, um, Baranchik was more more technical mm-hmm. um, than I expected. But he's obviously a very very like physically strong specimen. Yeah, uh, Baranchik is. But Taylor just did enough. How are you feeling about the final? N- nervous. I think mm-hmm. actually because uh, we've talked on this podcast before about how good Regis Progre is. Um, yeah. I think that it would be quite necessary for um, that fight to be held at the Hydro in order to make <laughs> sure, like, you know, that, that uh, Josh Taylor with, has with a bit of an Glaswegian <laughs> drudges, With three Glaswegian drudges and a Glaswegian, <laughs> or sorry, a, a, an Edinburgh, a Preston Pans referee. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, like I, I think that that would help um, because you know if if Josh Taylor has to travel, um, you know, and and fight somewhere in the states, you know, let's say it's, I mean, they must not be like m- maybe they'll do it somewhere neutral, maybe they do it in Abu Dhabi or something like that, you know. Um, well, you know, Progre in his interview at the end, when he was interviewed in the ring, said when people were booing him, he's like, hey, why are you booing me? I've not done fuck all. And then he's like, what if I come back to Glasgow? Will you stop booing me then? And they're all like, boo. Yeah, totally, I know. <laughs> but could you imagine, like, if they had had the final in Glasgow? I think in terms of, like, profile and ticket sales, that would be the place to have it, is, like, Hampden Park in the summer. I don't know. August. I don't, know. I don't, I don't I, Oh, it would be pretty sweet, but I don't know. I mean, Murray I Field. checked just out of interest, like a day or two beforehand, and the, 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 the this fight night wasn't sold out. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Um, so, I mean, the tickets are expensive. Uh, this is the thing with indoor venues. Obviously, they're much more expensive, but I, I don't know. Maybe now he's the champion. I don't know. I don't know um, if he's like a breakout Scottish star yet or not. I, I, it's difficult to say because, obviously, I know I've known who he is for ages, but then, you know, we're reasonably committed boxing fans so I think one of the problems is to be honest that like like actually Josh Taylor lives mainly in London when he's in camp so he's not in Scotland so like Mm. the I know this sounds terribly parochial but like the Scottish media won't travel to go see him and like Mm -hmm. like the BBC boxing like guys are busy doing other shit, like wanking off Deontay Wilder or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, you know, like really, like it's Josh who because actually he's not that big of a star yet. Like, yes, he's a world champion now. He needs to raise his profile in Scotland. I think it'll be interesting to see, obviously, how much of a profile bump he has now that he's you know a bona fide uh, champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. I think if he manages to beat Progre, unless I've somehow massively, I mean, I'm not an expert, but unless I've massively kind of misjudged it, then I think it would be like the performance of a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Like if he, you know, if he manages to beat him, because I really do think Progre is that good. The, the, I, I watched the some of the analysis on Sky, and they're saying that you know Progre is not as you know thick set and as physically and imposing a a, a fighter as Baranchik was. But his like his skill level and his movement, and his cleverness, and he's got power is on a different level. Yeah, you know, I agree. I, totally agree. If, if if Taylor if Taylor manages to beat him, it's like it's, it'll be nothing short of exceptional. And my my problem is is that I don't think the the casual boxing fans, the very casual fans that will maybe watch that, they won't be aware enough of just how good Progre is mm-hmm. to know how an astonishing achievement it will be. If Taylor beats him, I know this is a lot of like prevarication I'm doing, but do, do you know? Do you take my point? It, it, it maybe won't, he won't get the credit he deserves if he wins because Progre is phenomenal. Yeah, agree. But but he's probably not quite as phenomenal as the, <laughs> as the winner of the other big fight of the night because I I don't think maybe anyone is quite as phenomenal as as the winner of the other fight of the night. Oh no, yeah, 
I mean, honestly, um, I think that he is just unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. Um, I think it's like frightening what he's doing. I, <laughs> I think the Neil Denier actually pooped his pants a little bit when he got in the ring with him. Totally. He's going to get an injury. Like, um, I, I wonder actually like how that... I don't think Denier is going to last long. And and I think it would be really interesting actually if if Inoue wins the whole thing, right? If we can try and figure out exactly how many seconds of boxing he's had to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do that. How many how many punches does he throw that don't knock someone yeah, out? I know. It's like <laughs> it's insane, man. It's unbelievable. I mean, this is Rodriguez is like a really like high level operator who's I don't think ever been knocked down, let alone knocked out after however many fights he's had, um, you know, super solid fighter. And I knew he just, he just hits people and they just, it's like he's exploding and when he hits them, it's like, it's like an explosion. Yeah. He just like collapse. He keeps, he keeps knocking out like world-class fighters who've never been in this kind of trouble. And he's doing it in like a round or two. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's absurd what he's doing to fighters. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. <laughs> There's some kind of like optical illusion, and he actually must weigh like two hundred pounds. I think that's what it is. They they put Wilder in a costume. I think that's what they're <laughs> totally. doing. They're putting Wilder in a costume and like making him go in his knees, and then it's a new. So he's like knocking people out because he's really two hundred pounds. Oh, it's crazy, man. You know, it's just insane. Yeah, I said before when we thought it was obviously not Denier wasn't supposed to get through, but. But I said if he knocked out everyone in quick succession in the tournament, then I think you had to look at him as the new pound for pound. Mm-hmm. Totally. And I, I, even though he's not going to have to beat, like, was it Burnett he was supposed to beat or Tetty because of because of Daenerys' charmed life. <laughs> but even still, if he knocks him out a round or two, I think you've got to say he's at least, you've got to think of him as if he's not the best, he's certainly, you know, like one, two, three sort of thing because of how an outlier he is in terms of what he's doing to the other world-class fighters in his weight division. He's just destroying them. Yeah. It's insane. Pure insanity. Um, pure, pure insanity. Slightly, slightly less impressive because it's not another world class fighter. But but Deontay Wilder didn't didn't mess about. Well, we but we the thing is we knew he wouldn't right. Like <laughs> I mean, uh, the the thing is that I don't understand about Dominic Brazil is Brazil like this is your moment right. You've been waiting for fucking how long to have this fight? At least try and throw some punches, please. You know, well, I know he he did when he was before he got knocked out. He had like a little backs against the the turnbuckle. Yeah. And he kind of he threw a couple, but uh, yeah, he just he was there to be hit, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He just he didn't have any movement. Like you know, he didn't seem to have any desire. I mean, Deontay Wilder like obviously did what Deontay Wilder does and throws these wild fucking punches. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, and because Dominic Brazil doesn't have the level of skill that like Tyson Fury has when it comes to defense, he just got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> but what was interesting is that like if you look at a lot of Wilder's previous wins, he's getting you know against the kind of like whichever what you want to say like higher level guys. If, if you're saying it that, then like you know Ortiz, Ortiz he knocked out because Ortiz was so fatigued. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe he's got a great chin. Maybe Ortiz has got a great chin, but and, and Brazil doesn't. But um, that was like you know late on. Obviously, he only knocked down Fury like really late on, and then some of his other stoppages against some of the like lesser guys. There was like, it was like Spilka was like second half of the fight. There was um, do a pass was like late on. You know, so like at the start of his career when he was fighting absolute nuggets he was knocking people out in the first round or whatever but then like more more laterally you know it's t- kind of gone a bit lo- at least a bit longer um, but I don't know maybe it, it was just I guess it was such a sweet punch but Brazil unraveled like so quickly in the fight I uh, I agree I mean we, we have to remember that this is a Dominic Brazil who is not as good as the Dominic Brazil that fought Anthony Joshua 
in 2016. Well, it shouldn't... You know, it's a three... It shouldn't be any worse. He's three years older. Well, I know, but he's... Well, I, I suppose... Uh, I suppose you could say it like that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because you could say he's had more, like... He's had time to practice, and he's more experienced professionally. Yeah, I, I take your point. I'm not sure if he's better or worse. Because he... Uh, like, since... Since he's fought um, Anthony Joshua, um, Dominic Brazil has fought um, Ungona, Eric Molina, and Carlos Negron. It's not like he's like been up against, you know, anyone, anyone decent. decent. You know, it's it's not like he's fought anyone of Anthony Joshua's level or slightly not as good. You know, he's not even fought yeah. like a Kevin Johnson. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, he's, it's not like, you know, he hasn't fought um, someone like like a, a Dillian White, for in, for example. You know, these guys on the on the periphery. Mm-hmm. You know, or, or like a, a Manuel Char. He hasn't fought Manuel he's Char. Not, he's not, he's not really, why has he not fought Manuel Char? <laughs> I Char? don't know. Yeah, he's, he, he is broadly... You had that one fight, I can't remember the guy's name, the African fighter, and that was a proper barnstormer mm-hmm. of a fight. Mm-hmm. Um, who was like a tight, touted up-and-coming prospect who he beat, and that was a really good fight. But apart from that, yeah, he's just he's been sat around waiting for his, for his chance. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. The thing that got me thinking about the the fight is that when Wilder does fight Joshua, if he does like because Joshua's head movement's not great, and you know, if Wilder is is that destructive, which it seems like he is, you know, if he does get that chance to land, there's a there's a chance that he could beat him. I I think I would favor Joshua to win because his fundamentals are better, and I think I actually think if you're if he landed first on Wilder, I think Wilder is so vulnerable because, like, he he looked rocked by Brazil when and Brazil mm-hmm. threw a kind of like it was like a wrist punch off his off the ropes. Mm-hmm. He, he had this funny kind of like cuffing kind of shot, and it still like rocked Wilder. So I think if if Joshua landed on him, um, I think he I think he would be if he landed on him properly, I think he would be in massive trouble in the same way as vice versa. So it might just be like. First, the first one to win, the first one to land a punch wins. It could just be a total like flip of a coin sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly enough, Dominic Brazil um, is now suspended by the New York State Athletic Commission indefinitely for being shit. For being shit, yeah. Oh, is it because of the knockdown? Because of the knockdown, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah. This is, I think, the conclusion of this chapter. So I think Brazil, because we talked about the one good thing about this would be is Brazil's kind of like out of the way now. So apparently, uh, Wilder's going to rematch Ortiz. <coughs> I this, is, this is the chat. But this this, this can't be the chat. chat. This can't be the chat, man. Because oh, do, you remember, be right. do you remember what the fucking chat. the WBC yeah, did? It is the chat. Yeah, but you know, the WBC came out and fucking made this big long thing about, okay, uh, whoever Deontay Wilder beats then fights, uh, like, um, Dillian White has to then fight that one, right? So if Deontay Wilder or Dominic Brazil won, it's, it's Dillian White's shot. So Dillian White is next in line to fight Deontay Wilder. This is just the shit that the WBC have fucking said. Over and over again, and they made that big long fucking thing to say why it was Dominic Brazil in the first place. Remember, because Brazil was supposed mm-hmm. to fight Dillian White, and then there were Brazil was the, Brazil was the mandatory, so he'll get a voluntary defense now. But that's not what the WBC had said that was going to happen. Oh, well, they'll just change their mind anyway. <laughs> so, so what should have happened, right? Is that uh, so? It was initially they'd called Brazil and White to fight. And this was going to be to tick over while Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fought. But then that didn't happen. So they said, okay, well, Dominic Brazil is now the mandatory. Whoever, uh, then they fight and Dillian Dillian White is then the mandatory to fight them. So Dillian White should be next in line. I, so I think he that makes sense, but I think he's allowed a voluntary defense first. I think they'll say he's allowed a voluntary defense before they enforce the mandatory. It's insane, man. But I mean, they just make it up as they go along. Yeah. It's completely incoherent. So we'll see. But 
the, certainly the chat that I was reading was that he was going to be fighting Ortiz next. Mm. You know. Bringing him out of retirement. Yeah, exactly. He's not, he's not in retirement, but he is a retire. He is a pensionable. <laughs> it's a pen- no one knows how old he is. Um, should th- yeah, should we move on? <laughs> yeah, should we? We should. I want to talk. I know this wasn't last week; it was the week before. But I watched. Do you remember we said when we were doing our news last a couple of weeks ago, and you you were going to watch the Sky Card on the Friday night, and I was going to watch Ultimate Boxer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I watched a bit of Ultimate Boxer. How'd it go? I was like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? Was it not like, was it not Ultimate? <laughs> it wasn't even Penultimate. <laughs> it, was, it was just dire. Like, uh, it was very entertaining in terms of like, the, these guys just trying to knock seven bells out of each other. But they hadn't, no one had explained to them how to do that thing. That, um, what do you call it? Boxing. Yeah, no one had explained to either of the participants what the boxing was about. Right, okay. So it was just a... It was just basically like two blokes off the street. This is probably a bit unfair. I apologise in advance if anyone's got links to any of the fighters in it. But, I mean, they, they were not... Let's put it this way. They were not uh, high level. Okay. They were very game, but they were not very skilled. It was a bit... It was a bit of a... I was like, what is this? Very strange. Anyway, I think there's plenty more installments of it, the different mm-hmm. weight divisions. So it's the sort of thing that if you went to it and you were like quite drunk, and you know, you might, you went with a crowd of folk and then were quite drunk, you might be like, yeah, this is great fun, but not in a kind of, you know, reviewing the skill kind of mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, well, I just want to have a little mention because uh, I obviously watched the Sky Card and I. Um, Always. You jinxed it. I did fucking jink it. Jinx it. <laughs> um, you know, Jordan Gill, um, in his first defense, he didn't do well, mate. He didn't do well. <laughs> Actually, he was like, I think there was something going on with some sort of illness or something. Cause he, he, said he, was, he said he was ill, no? Yeah, he, he comes back. So he's fighting Enrico Tinoco. Um, and he just kept getting knocked down I, like the commentators thought actually maybe he had a broken rib because every time this boy uh tinoco hit jordan gill in the side jordan gill went right fucking down um until mm-hmm. the point and i just want to say as well you know my boy dave caldwell was a great cornerman and you see him just like saying no you're not taking anymore and ending the fight and I think Jordan Gill was a bit annoyed at first, but actually, that's what like a good trainer does. Because the guy's quite young; it's, like he doesn't. He's yeah, twenty four. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? He doesn't need exactly. to be getting fucking killed for like a, what is it like an intercontinental belt or something? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. If if the fight's gone away from him, there's no point. Especially like you say, as a kind of an up and coming fighter, you don't want the miles on the clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So good, good corner work. Very good corner work. Um, it was good. It was a good fight, though, um, but uh, like, not for Jordan Gill, obviously. <laughs> yeah, blast through a couple of results from the previous mm-hmm. week just to kind of make reference to them. Uh, Miguel Berchel beat Vargas. Mm-hmm. He just pummeled him, mm-hmm. basically. Berchel's a bit of a monster, to yeah. be honest. Uh, he's what he's widely regarded as the the best super feather mm-hmm. um along with uh boxing's favorite idiot mm-hmm. Javante mm-hmm. Davis so those those two need to fight yeah. they need to fight they need to that fight would be very yeah nice to see they need to fucking fight uh Barry Shell's a beast he's like just relentless and a real power puncher um sad news for Isaac Dogby couldn't get close to to revenging uh Emmanuel Navarrete just he just couldn't couldn't cope with no. him couldn't live with no. him Navarrete looked mean. Uh, big <laughs> upset that we should reference as well. Julian Williams beating Jarrett Hurd. Oh, big man. Underdog. Real big underdog, but did the business. Do you know what? Jarrett Hurd did not look good in that fight. No. No, uh, not not even a little. Like, I was expecting a lot more from Jarrett Hurd. And Williams just had everything. Because, again, he uh, Jarrett Hurd was not using his size against Julian Williams. Williams was just uh-huh. taking him to town, man. It was insane. Oh. 
Really interesting. Um, this could go in the random news section, but I'll move it up just to make reference to it while we're speaking about it here. Williams has come out on Twitter and said, I don't know if you saw this, Williams has come out on Twitter and said that, and he's like, you know, got, is it three of the four marbles? Yeah. He? I think now. Or is it two or three of them? I can't remember. Anyway, he's come out and said that uh, anyone that wants to, wants to fight him will have to sign up for 90-day VADA testing. So they can't be like... He makes some... I can't remember the exact wording, but basically like they can't be doing no cycling in and out of like I drugs test, drugs taking sort of shit. So he's saying, you want to fight me? Fine, but you're doing 90-day VADA testing. Uh, as a as a kind of condition of him agreeing to any fight, and he's put it out on Twitter. So he's like, he's up in the game, being serious about the um, sort of imposing the drugs testing. Good regime. shit, man. Good, good shit. We like. I like that shit. Like that. I like that shit. It's good, huh? Yeah. Um, and I think that's about all we have yeah, for results. It is. So let's move on to what the f are the fights this weekend. So this was supposed to be the heavyweight debut for Usyk. I know, man. Carlos Takam, and it's obviously it's not. not. He's, so, he's, he's hurt his shoulder. Poor boy. <laughs> bicep. Is it bicep? No. Uh, uh, so he's done a. He's, uh, yeah, bicep shoulder. Whatever. Bicep. bicep. So Devin Haney versus Antonio Moran is now the top of that DAZN and Sky card mm-hmm. from. Where's it from? Oh, Somewhere it's Auburn, it's it? Maryland, it's Baltimore or something. Maryland, Maryland Bur- yeah. yeah. It's fucking um, odd. Man. I looked up. <laughs> I looked up Moran. Uh, he had a narrow, very narrow points defeat to Jose Pedraza, who we know of as a kind of uh, world class fighter, and uh, Moran is also. And I don't know if this has been incorrectly noted, but according to. To box record Wikipedia Moran is 6 feet tall uh, as a lightweight <laughs> no way he's <laughs> he's, he's big for the weight like <laughs> he's fucking big he's a lightweight Callum Smith um, but anyway so he's a kind of pretty decent level opponent Devin Haney's obviously um, super highly touted and, and has fought enough people to be kind of to, he's gone from um, prospect to contender mm-hmm. really hasn't he yeah. he's in the kind of contender bracket if he demolishes Moran then he's going to be uh, looking for a, a decent shot I think next more interestingly on the card is also a super lightweight unifications women's fight between Jessica McCaskill and Anahi Sanchez nice uh, for the super lightweight marbles this is a big mm-hmm. fight for women's boxing nice it's good to see they're putting it on the card so, like they should maybe be saying a bit more about it I think so. It's kind of gone under the radar a little bit, but I hope it's a good, good quality fight um, to f- sort of further the interest in it. There are a couple other ones on the card. My tip for the top for the heavyweight division: Philip Hergovich fights Gregory Corbin, mm-hmm. who uh, who's thirty eight years old and lost his last fight to Charles Martin. What? I don't know if you look. What? You look, Gregory Gregory Corbin is thirty eight years old, and his last fight he lost to Charles oh, Martin. For fuck. And Christ, do do you want to guess why? Unless you've looked it up, do you want to guess why he lost the fight? Uh, Charles Martin knocked him out with a dreadlock. <laughs> That's actually quite a lot funnier than the reality of what happened. No, um, he was disqualified. Uh, low blows. Four low Fuck blows. me, man. Jesus Christ. Seems to happen surprisingly often. Huh? I've seen some other fights where this is... Do you know what? It'll be like awareness fallacy, though. It'll be like, you know, you'd never look out for it. And then as soon as, mm-hmm. like, you're kind of more aware of it, you notice it more. It'll be something like that. I like, I like the idea. I like what you've done there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why there would be, like... Men are particularly prone to punch each other in the balls at all, though, really. <laughs> Within the context of a boxing match, but I do take your point. Um, Michael Hunter is also on the card fighting Fabio Maldonado, who is a man who interchanges bouts between MMA and boxing, so I think he's shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm assuming he's pretty fucking shit, and I looked at his record, and he is pretty shit. 
Uh, we've got to ring the free ring the free boxing. Ding bell, ding right? ding ding ding! Free boxing alert! Your favourite fury, <laughs> Huey Fury, mm-hmm. the shittest of the furies. <laughs> <laughs> Which fury are you? <laughs> I'm the shit fury. <laughs> oh, Christ. I'm the mini, mini fury. I'm the mini fury. I'm the mini fury. The, the least impressive fury. And what do you know about the man he's fighting, Chris Norad? Uh, I know nothing about Chris Norad. No, I, I know nothing about Chris Norad either. Um, the fight's on Channel 5. He's got an unbeaten record, does Chris Norad. I think he might be something of a modern-day Peter McNeely. Right, though. okay, just picking picking I've, people. Like, <laughs> I, I, I've got a feeling, yeah, all his fights were in, like, sports halls in Ontario or something, so I, I think he's going to be dire, but it'll be about the, him having an O. Mm-hmm. But anyway, free boxing, Channel 5. Good stuff. Saturday night. Get on it. Get on it. Right, well, let's move on to what the F went wrong last week. I made a massive mistake. And what was that? Well, when I was talking about the football, I said there was going to be a goal in the 33rd <laughs> minute, and the goal was actually scored. It was actually a goal scored in the 35th minute. I know. So. I know. Do you know what? It was insane, man, when that happened, right? Like, honestly, do you know what? There was... Um, one of our uh, new listeners, uh, also named Andy, actually. Um, Good he, name. Solid name. A very solid name. He actually messaged uh, the Facebook page, um, and he was asking if we have a Twitter, which we do, guys. It's at Boxing Unwrapped, so please follow us, because like, actually no one follows us, so we just tweet <laughs> into the abyss of nothing. Uh, but we do have, we do have a, a Twitter. Um and he was like, I wanted to tweet you guys when uh, your prediction came right. <laughs> I was like, well, it is boxing unwrapped, so you can you can tweet. But, I mean, fucking help. Imagine you put a bet on for that, by the way. I know. It would have been nicer. It was just so funny. So that in case anyone's not following, the f- I made a flipping off hand remark that was recorded before the match saying that Tottenham were going to win in, Am- in Amsterdam. They were going to beat Ajax. And, uh, and thanks to the last minute... Brazilian brilliance of Mura they did so uh, I was like and of course they were not at all no one really gave them a prayer of winning that match but they did very nice very nice stuff so I don't, I don't want to like taint that joyous what the F went right moment by including anything else unless you've got anything pivotal Ryan I don't have anything else I want to talk about uh, no I don't have I don't have anything <laughs> let's 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 move on swiftly to some random news Mm. We were speaking in a previous episode about um, Luke Campbell fighting Lomachenko. Yes. And where'd, where'd that be? The KC where'd Stadium. Well, this is what all the chat on Twitter is. So Luke Campbell asked everyone on Twitter, where do you want me to fight Loma? And everyone said, oh, come round my house and do it. <laughs> but apart from all those kind of responses... Everyone who was being like semi serious all said, "Oh, Casey, Casey, Casey." I, so you might be I, right, I, Ryan. man. Of course, I'm fucking right. Of course, I'm fucking right. <laughs> Look, I wonder. It, I'd high pitched. You would very. High-pitched. I wonder if there's a way of me putting a bet on that it will be at the KC Stadium, right? If you can find oh, it, you can, you can find. You can Twitter stuff. You can tweet. Like, can you not ask? the bookies to come up with odds for something I don't know if so, if I can find a way of putting a bet on for this I will put a bet on I, for this well I think I don't know which ones it is but at least some of the bookmakers you can tweet right. them and say can I bet on this and the, I think they will like let you put put a bet on I will because back. actually like it just makes business sense <laughs> It just makes good commercial right. sense. The, the one thing that I'll need to do just to double check myself is check if, like, where you can fly from Kiev to in the UK. Because you can fly direct to Hull from Kiev. <laughs> I mean, if only that was the case, <laughs> right? Imagine EasyJet did, like, a super cheap Kiev to Hull. Do you know what I mean? I'd be like, no, it's going to have to be the KC Stadium. <laughs> 
they'd put it up to like £750 for the week of the fight. Oh, no, but that's just supply and demand. That's the way these things work, Andy. It's nothing to that do the, with oh, thank, profiteering. Thanks for telling me about that, Ren. Tell, tell me more because <laughs> I can't remember any of my economic degrees. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it's nothing to do with profiteering, Andy. It's nothing to do with that. It's not at all. No. It's not at all. No. Could, you get a, could you get a boat? <laughs> you know what? You probably could. <laughs> it would be a very long boat trip. Could you? Uh, I don't know. Oh. If you drove to Amsterdam and then got the ferry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you mean <laughs> you couldn't get a boat another way. Uh, like, or maybe you'd have to go all the way around, like, <laughs> the tip of Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, like, doing that, that trip. would be a very long boat Right, trip. okay, hold on. It should be like the guys, the boys getting to Baku, the Arsenal and Chelsea fans right. try to get to Baku. I'm going to do a little search, right? So I'm going to do some, some directions, right, from Kiev, Kiev to, to, Hull. To, the case, <laughs> to the Casey Stadium, right? <laughs> yeah, let's get specific about it. Don't be silly. Right, right the Casey Stadium, right? So, right. Um, right, you can drive it in 29 hours, by the way. From from Kiev. From Kiev, 29 hours, right? Um, which isn't too bad, right? Do, do you need a Do you need a, an amphibious boat to do that, though, right? <laughs> well, no, you'd go under the tunnel, wouldn't you? You'd go, you'd take the tunnel, right? Okay. Right. Okay. It should be a bit of a spoil sport. To right. Honest, but anyway. Now, uh, this is very, very interesting. By the way, right? You know how we were talking about flights, right? Uh, you can get a flight, like direct. Five hours. KLM. No, you, they f- no, you they fly at Humberside Airport. <laughs> I feel like we've kind of gone quite... I, I don't know. This but this whole section might need to be cut out. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. You can fly... You can fly straight to Humberside Airport in five hours from Kiev. You, it's a direct Direct flight, flight yeah. That, I just don't think that's correct. I'm telling you, I've got Google Maps right here. <laughs> right, Google Flights have told me I can fl- okay. I can fly at KLM. Right, they just they uh-huh. do not one but two flights a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's not direct. I just refuse to believe it's direct. It's not direct. I've got it. It stops and Amsterdam. Oh right, okay, okay, but still. Right. That's not bad. Still pretty good. Right? The flights aren't bad. Like like 400 quid I've got here. 300, 300 quid round trip, yeah. Fine. Easy. Easy. Put it on at the KC. Well, well, if uh, if we've done that extensive research and come up with that answer, then um, I'm sure I'm sure Eddie Hearn's minions have done the same. (laughs) I'd hope. I'd hope. (laughs) Oh, me. Should we move yeah, on? let's move on to. Or should, should, should we talk? Should we talk about like European flight routes more? <laughs> oh fucking hell! Uh, oh me, oh me. Um, see, just actually on that point, the whole thing about oh man, there's no way. This, the whole thing about the thing with the Arsenal and Chelsea fans trying to get to back it. I get that because you need like a visa, and it's so far away, and then the flights are kind of tricky. But all the people moaning about oh, it's so expensive to get to Madrid, right? Fly to a different city in Spain and get a train. <laughs> like it's super connected. Like this is not like an unsolvable problem. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I know. Fly the day before into a different city, get a train for two or three hours. <laughs> go to the match and if there's no hotel accommodation you don't want to spend a thousand pounds then buy a fucking tent for 20 quid and camp outside Madrid like come on Jesus Christ I know man Sorry. I know it's, it's it's just it is frustrating think outside the box just, guys yeah come on our listeners would all think it's you box. know but get in, get in contact with uh, boxing unwrapped travel agents <laughs> <laughs> have you ever considered Ukraine it's very nice this time of year <laughs> Oh, me. Right, should we move? Should yeah, we actually move, move on? on yeah. Right, okay. Uh, Pacquiao yeah. versus Thurman, 20th of July, pay per view, pay per view, pay per view, pay per view. Thurman uh, said it's his time, Pacquiao's time is gone, he's going to lay him out. Uh, I mean, 
I just I just kind of hope that actually Pacquiao retires after this. He's kind of distracting good fighters from doing shit for money. I know because they're just looking at him like glowingly as this giant pile of walking cash. Yeah, I know. I know. I I just want like Pacquiao oh. to like get a whole bunch of money, pay off his tax bill, and please don't step into the <laughs> ring. <laughs> I think he's going to keep going a while longer. I'll be interested to see what happens with this. I would not pay for it. We've talked about why this is not a great pay-per-view card, but we don't know. Thurman's the unknown. A prime Thurman wins and wins well. The Thurman that was last time out pro- quite possibly gets beat because he looked like poop. Pretty dog yeah. shit. After the first three or four rounds, he kind of disagrees. Yeah, it looks like poop. Um, your boy, Callum Smith, or your giant, giant man, Callum, man Smith. Callum Smith, I know. Hassan Ndam yeah fighting on the AJ undercard 1st of June uh, Ndam retired Martin Murray mm-hmm. I think last one of his one of his last fights I think he's a he's a good like a, maybe a sort of top 10-ish fighter but Cam Smith will be expected to beat him and beat him well uh, yeah and uh, you know I'm, I am I guess right I'm going to give Callum Smith this fight be, as, a, as a kind of tick over comeback but I, I, I want to see him after this like Starting to dominate the super middle division, but I mean, I I genuinely think he wants the sort of marquee fights. Mm-hmm. Like I think, I, I I think you I think that's right what you're mm-hmm. saying, and I think you will see them. I think he will go after everyone he can. Talk about uh, Billy Joe Saunders wants to fight. Billy Joe Saunders dies against Callum Smith. He was dog shit in that last fight, and we can talk about that later. But like, he was dog shit. That fight that he had was dog shit. He was so out of shape. He was just, he like, he's just not, he, he lost it. He was trying to do all his showboating and stuff, but he was st- he just wasn't, he should have knocked that guy out and he couldn't knock him out. Mm, like a mini fury, yeah. isn't he? But it's interesting. Mm. Right, actually, I'm just thinking, like, why didn't I include that? As- oh, yeah, by the way, guys, Billy Joe Saunders fought. We meant we should have <laughs> we should have mentioned this in the news, but you know what? It was so shit. We didn't he didn't even make our fucking top list. I uh, well, that's, that's a v- <laughs> very strong opinion. A very like po- I think that might be a polarizing opinion, right? Yeah, I thought it was shit. I thought it was shit. Um, his opponent was terrible, and he and he very nearly got knocked down. Yeah, the ropes held. Yeah, him up. exactly. The ropes held him up. That he actually, in th- just thinking that, because the ropes clearly stopped him tippling over, toppling over, sorry. Should he not have had a count? In yeah, the yeah, but I don't know if the ref didn't notice it or if, like, Frank Warren said, look, just don't count him. Don't. Because he real all the way back across mm-hmm. the ring. Mm-hmm. If that boy can hit him, I know people are saying, oh, well, he'll concentrate better against, you know, if he fights like a Canelo or whatever. But he's going to get hit, and if that boy, is Sufi kind of rattled him that much, Canelo's going to land on him. Golovkin's going to land on him. He's not going to. He's not going to avoid being punched for twelve rounds against either of the the two of the best fighters mm-hmm. in the world. It's just an impossibility. And if he's if he buckles like that, I don't know. I think he could be in trouble. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a. It was. A, it wasn't a great fight. Was mm-hmm. it? it was just like the guy was a Sufi. Is just a rubbish. Yeah, fight. it's total shit. It's just terrible. <laughs> and no right to be fighting for a belt. Mm-hmm. We can talk about that a bit later as well. Uh, more random news. Yep. Uh, when <laughs> when Garcia's collide. <laughs> So there's a lot of chat about Mikey <laughs> Garcia is going to take on Danny Garcia. <laughs> so many Garcias. So many Garcias. Do you know what I think's happening? What's that? I think, I think like the Conservative <laughs> cabinet, I think everyone has got in a room, right? And and Terence Crawford is Theresa May, and they're all ganging up on him and going, no one, no one in any weight division anywhere near him is allowed to fight Terence Crawford, right? Yeah, you know what I mean, totally. right? And I was like, okay, so we're all promising under no circumstances does anyone agree to fight Terence Crawford. Like, yeah, okay, fine. Right, so we'll all fight each other. Right, okay, right. fine. But not <laughs> Terence. He's not allowed in the club, okay? <laughs> totally. Uh, he's just too good. So, <laughs> he's, just, he's just too good. Oh, me. 
So, um, so apparently Mickey Garcia, Mikey Garcia, and Danny Garcia are going to be fighting in August. But this is this is not confirmed. It's speculative. I don't know. Now, I I want to know a question about this. Right. So, does this mean um, that actually he vacates his like welterweight status, and when Regis Progre fights Josh Taylor? Does one of them get to challenge be all of be them. a lineal so, lineal champion? Like, what would the rules of that be? Because Mikey Garcia for the for the for the lineal yeah. championship. If he's, it's a very good question because he's a lineal champion at um, super lightweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good question. If he says, I'm never fighting at Super Lightweight again, or does it stay with him in it until he fights the winner of that? Yeah, because like, that can't Taylor. be the case. Because like, he, he's... Cause he could never fight yeah. there again. That's a good question. Ma- That's one for the, the... Our mates at the TBRB. The, yeah, they're going to have to help us out with mm-hmm. that one because we've got, we've got stuck. It's a very good question. Yeah. Um, I do not think Mikey Garcia, on the basis of his last outing, should be fighting at Wellington no. again. No, no, no. So unless with more time he can do it differently, he can he can bulk up a bit more properly. Mm-hmm. But okay, Garcia is not as as big or quite as good as uh, Spence, but he's still more of a welterweight than Gar. Than I can't say Garcia <laughs> is because they're both Garcia. <laughs> Mike than than Mikey is. Sounds like I'm his pal, Mikey. Go do it, Mikey. Um. So there we are. Yep. Yeesh. We'll see. We'll see if it happens, first of all. Then we can condemn it. Cool. I think that's us for random news, is it? So, Andy, do you want to tell me what grinds your gears this week? You know what really grinds my gears? I will do. And you made reference to it in the most glowing terms. The, the fight that has seen... The fight from the glamorous Stevenage location that has seen uh, Billy Joe Saunders <laughs> become a uh, world title holder... At, Super middleweight, so he's now a two weight world champion. My issue is not so much with the fight, although although you, obviously you know you you, you weren't particularly <laughs> chuffed about it. My <laughs> issue is the fact that in the build up to the fight, it went from being a wor- a fight for a world title to not being to being to being to not being to being to being. So it was, mm-hmm. and it was completely mm-hmm. unclear th- whether or not at various points it actually was or wasn't for a world title. Which is just like an absurd situation. Imagine like there was a football match, yeah. right? And they were, and then one week it was like, oh yeah, yeah, next week's World Cup final. And then it was like a day later, it's like, oh no, no, it's a friendly. And then the next day, it's like, oh no, no, it's the World Cup final. Like, do you know? And that's effectively what they've done with it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how how yeah. can there be any ambiguity about this whatsoever? It, surely it's like it's announced, you know. And it all stems back from did Ramirez vacate or not? But you have to have absolute clarity at all the all the points and all the stages, so everyone is aware what's happening and why, and just make it like completely clear, completely transparent, and and and, and fixed unless there's a real obvious, um, you know, something like an injury or withdrawal or or, or retirement or something happens mm-hmm. that then changes it. Mm-hmm. But this this changed back and forth where there was no other, like, dynamic parts to it. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like anything happened in the interim. It was just about, oh, no, I didn't do that, or, oh, I did do that. It's, it's just a completely, like, absurd situation for it to be unclear as to whether or not he's fighting for a world belt. And then the fact that it was in the end makes no sense because there's, there's, there's no way yeah. to understand why this would have been a, a world title fight at Super Middle. Exactly. You know, I think sometimes it's like, Oh well, the belt's vacant. You know this fight is happening. They've got a relatively big name. It's going to be in front of a bunch of eyes, so we can put that belt there. So at least that you know that belt is being mentioned and our sanctioning bodies being and mentioned. And we're getting the fees. Yeah, and obviously, like let's not forget let's the not fees, forget man. The fees. And and our, our man's getting to fly <laughs> over with his like you know two grand in spending money that doesn't have to have any receipts and all that shit as well. You know, exactly. Fuck me, exactly. man. So that whole is it isn't it is it isn't it scenario about the world title is just ridiculous, and that is what this week ground my gears. So 
Ryan, tell me, this week, what grinds your gears? You know what really grinds my gears? Right, Andy, I'm going to tell you what grinds my gears, <laughs> Go right? On. And um, it's, you know, it's actually the Dominic Brazil Deontay Wilder right. fight. Because, uh, you know, I, you know that I've got my problems with Dillian White, right? <laughs> you, but actually, you know, this, this, I've got my odd bit of beef now, now and then. But, you know, he knocked out a cabbage, Deontay Wilder. And I think that for this to be up for a bell, it's another example of the WBC giving Deontay Wilder the easiest fucking ride for any heavyweight champion. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about, oh, he's knocked out all these boys, blah, blah, blah. He's knocking out nuggets. (laughs) Absolute nuggets. You know, and... (laughs) The reason why Dillian White doesn't get a look in is I think they actually think, oh, he might fight fucking Deontay Wilder. What if he hits him? What if he doesn't get knocked out immediately? Because for for anything that we can say about Dillian White, the boy has a fucking chin on him. He does have a chin. You know, he's got a chin, man. He, You know, he's taken some serious damage from Derek Chisora, not once, but twice. He does have a chin and he can um, bang. He definitely can bang. And he can bang. He definitely can bang. He's fearless. He works hard. Um, you know, he's he's not the best fighter in the world um, by any means. But I would certainly say that he ranks above fucking Dominic Brazil. I mean, if we go back to our old friends at the TBRB, mm-hmm. you know, Dillian White is number four. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you, where is Dominic Brazil on that fucking list? Well, yeah. He's not in the top ten. I'll tell you for that much. Which is right enough because he's not a top... Even even with the even with the, the sort of paucity of, of quality heavyweights, he's not a top ten. No way. No, no. way. Of course he fucking isn't. Of course he fucking isn't. So, uh, you know, people are going around and saying, oh, wasn't that KO brutal? Doesn't it make Deontay Wilder look so dangerous? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it does make him look dangerous. And it's because he's he's knocking out fucking nuggets. You know? Right? He might as well be fighting me. <laughs> fucking fighting De- Dominic Brazil. I'll put up just as much of a fight as to fucking Dominic Brazil will. Maybe a bit more. I'm a bit quicker. I'll move around a little bit. You better. You can duck a bit you know? more better. I can Quick, duck him a bit better. He'll, he, uh, you know what? He'll get a real back spasm bending down to try and hit me. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, yeah. the only redeeming feature for me about this is that it's it's done and I think it's put to bed. And um, I, I hope basically the, you kind of run out of, of even like semi-viable opponents to fight as opposed to either the actual ones that are viable, although there aren't many, many of them, or somehow, like, the up-and-coming ones who get a shot, one of them proves to be actually, like, a, a kind of competitive, like, real-deal kind of fighter. So that's what we need to happen. So, uh, though, like I say, the only thing for me that's redemptive about it is that at least one of the, the guys that should not be fighting at the top has now been, uh, I think, made irrelevant, really. He better, have, he better mm-hmm. have been. His, totally his ship his, or his chances surely have sailed now. I really hope they have. He doesn't deserve any more. Totally agree. Totally agree, so. man. So yeah, that's that's what grinds my gears this week. Um, now I'd, let's finish up with a little bit of listener corner. I want to give another shout out to our boy Andy that messaged us to ask us whether or not we have a Twitter or not. Um, like. We do have a Twitter. We don't. We're not really that active, are we? No. Andy? We could be more what active. Was it? Um, we could be. More. Twitter. Twitter can be a little bit. What was? What was Matt's line? It was about Twitter being a bit like sort of despondent or disparaging or a little bit of a dark place. Mm-hmm. I can't remember something like that, which I thought was quite apt. It's not. It's not yeah. the most kind of like cheerful environment generally. It can be quite funny. <laughs> yeah, but it, it can be quite. But funny. it's not uplifting. No, but I'm wondering if there's a way that we can make we, it we, work better for you guys. It. We can change Twitter. Can we change it? So, uh, answers on a postcard. Tweet us at Boxing Unwrapped or, like, you know, drop us a message on the Facebook page like our boy Andy and let us know, like, what's 
what's useful for you. Like, if we sent out, I don't know, like, our upcoming fights and where to find them or, you know, shit like that, would that be useful? Like, would that be shit that you want to see? The news stuff? Would you like us to tweet stuff about whatever's whatever's the most recent news, etc., etc.? Boxing news, obviously. We're not going to cover Brexit. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's pretty much a boxing match in itself, man. (laughs) I mean, the conservative fucking leadership uh, contest is like Game of fucking Thrones. It's lasting longer than Wilder Brazil, Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, so let us know genuinely, like, what you think we should do with our Twitter. Um, Because, like, there's no point in us just guessing. Like, just tell us what what you want us Mm, to do. Yeah, that would be great. Um, But, yeah. Yeah, uh, so with that in mind, guys, um, it's uh, us for this week. We've got a super special episode for you uh, coming up, which is a deep dive into who the F is Roy Jones Jr., and it's a good one. Um, But anyway, so it's goodbye from me, Ryan. Goodbye from me, Andrew.